In this video, we're going to be looking at another important part of fundraising, and that's applying for grants. So if you've been following the series so far, you'll have already worked through your idea about making something interesting happen. You'll have a budget and a basic plan for your project. You'll have worked out who your project benefits, who's going to be interested in it in some way, and who might be able to help you get it happening, who might be able to support it. So our first and most important question is, what is grant funding? What is it that I'm talking about and all those people are talking about when they're talking about grant proposals and bids and getting funding from different organisations? So this is a situation where you write a proposal, so your idea and your budget, all of the things that will happen as part of your project. You send it off or submit it to a funding body and those funders read that proposal and make a decision just on what you've given them. And then this gives you access, if you're successful, to a larger project fund, so significant amounts of money to make things happen. This money is a non-repayable payment, so it's not a loan, it's not something that you're borrowing, you don't have to give this money back. Once your project has been awarded with a grant, this is yours to use how you see fit. So grant funding is a way of distributing funds that are held by larger bodies or organisations. Usually it has to go towards a specific project, so it has to be very clear what the edges of this project are and how it's going to operate. Usually the project can't have already started when you're applying for the funding, so you might have made some preparation or you might have done some drafting of ideas and things like that, but it can't be in full swing, it can't really be underway yet for most uh, grant funding bodies. Your funding application is based on this kind of SMART principles, so that's things like it being specific, it being about a specific project, it being measurable, so something that you can see that it's happening, what the difference and what the impact of what you're doing is, something that's achievable and realistic and also something that's timed. So it has to happen in a particular timeline that is laid out by you and by the granting body, so whoever awards you that grant. You'll get a grant by writing a proposal or an application and when you receive one you'll also need to be involved in reporting and evaluating your project. So the people who have given you that grant funding will expect a report or evaluation in return. They're going to ask you to, to give them specific figures and details on how your project went and how it impacted uh, different people who they're interested in. So when we're talking about grant funders, there's a few different types of funders that you should think about. In the UK, we've got the UK Lottery Funding Granting Bodies. So you'll recognise these logos, things like Arts Council England, the Heritage Lottery Fund and the Big Lottery Fund. So there are quite a few of these that are about redistributing money uh, from the lottery, so the profits that are made by the National Lottery and redistributing that to good causes of different kinds. There are also different government agencies, so uh, like Innovate UK or the British Council. And at the moment, we also have money from European uh, funding, so European government funding. Alongside these, there's a whole host of different charities, trusts and foundations. There's way too many of these to list here. And sometimes it can be tricky to find out information about which charities and funds exist. If you've got access to a funding finder directory, maybe at your university, college or your local library, I'd highly recommend using that to have a look through so that you can see the amount and number of different uh, trusts and foundations and charities that give out grants of different kinds. Another important question is why would funders give you a grant? And the very simple answer to that is because it helps them to achieve their aims. So when you're thinking about grants and making applications, you really need to focus on what those funders' aims are. So the, the funding body or the charity or the trust uh, that you're applying to, what are the things that they say they're most interested in achieving? 
and then you compare those with your project aims and that part in the middle is where you're working out your proposal and your application to them. You'll also remember when we were looking at the pros and cons that grant funding comes with a series of these of its own. So usually when you're applying for grants, it's for larger projects and uh, really good for anything that has a budget over a thousand pounds. So a lot of the funding providers have minimum amounts, cut off amounts, and they also have maximum amounts. So that's an important thing to know about when you're looking here. Receiving grant funding can also give you a really important seal of approval. So when you see those logos on people's projects, say like the Arts Council uh, Award, then that means that somebody has deemed that project to be really good, to be outstanding, uh, to be a really important project that needs to happen. And that can be a great seal of approval for you as you uh, work more widely with different audiences and try and get different people involved in your project. Grants are usually also focused on projects that have public benefits. So when we're thinking about uh, the specifics of a project, usually grant funding will go towards something that has a wider benefit for members of the general public or for specific groups of the public. It's also a great way to turn your professional track record into money. So this can be a pro and a con. If you're still developing your track record, if you haven't done many projects already, then it can be more difficult to get grant funding. However, if you have started to make different projects happen or if your community or the groups that you're uh, involved in have a track record of getting things off the ground, then this is a great way of turning that track record into money to fund your project. When we're looking at the cons, again, grant funding and applying, making these applications and proposals takes time. So it takes quite a lot of time and effort and preparation to write them, first of all. And then there'll usually be a waiting period. So once you've submitted the funding application, it might be six weeks, it might be 12 weeks, something like that before you hear a decision back. It can also be a really complex process, so I don't want to put you off and I don't want to worry you, but there are um, specifics about the way that funding and applications work that make it quite complex. You might need a hand, you might need to get some guidance from somebody who's done this before, before you embark on it. You're also going to need to secure match funding for your project. So that means that for um, every pound you're asking for from the grant fund, that you have to find another pound from somewhere else to help fund that. That might be from different types of private income. It might be from advertising. It might be from ticket sales. It might be a whole mixture of things. You might involve crowdfunding in there. There might be lots of different ways to achieve that match funding. And partnerships is one of your very best ways to do that. So that's partnering up with other organisations and other people who want to make things happen. You'll do that to share audience with each other, so to make each of your voices louder, to make the voice of the project itself louder, to use their contacts, maybe to use uh, venue, equipment, different things like that. You might be thinking about who are the other organisations that sh share your aim in this area and work out ways that you can work with them. The last of the cons on this list, again, is a really big one. So grant funding is all or nothing. If the board who are looking at your uh, proposal decide to reject it and decide to say no, decide to say no this time, uh, then all of that hard work goes in and you don't receive any benefit from it. So this is just something you need to know about. It's something you need to be aware about when you're investing your time and your energy in writing applications. This crossover section, this is your project proposal. 